And this question came in. I thought this is a really cool question. There was someone who was fairly new to um, the database world or the DBA world. And they said, they, they, they said, it was pretty simple. They said, I create a table called T. It looks like that. And it says table created. They were doing it in SQL Developer. And then I click on the SQL tab, which actually generates the DDL for that table. And they said, I was expecting to sort of get that back. And there are preferences in SQL Developer in which you can actually do that. But they got back the create table command followed by all of this kind of stuff that you have at the end of a create table command. And they said, can you explain all this stuff to me because I'm fairly new and, and what do I, you know, how do I, what do I choose for all these values? Then we came up to init trans and max trans. In a given database block, we allocate a bit of space for what's called the interested transaction list. You'll see the term ITL. And for example, here I've got four of them. This is the number of concurrent open transactions that can be active on a particular block at any given point in time. So that might be session one, this might be session 12 and so forth. They can have uncommitted transactions going on inside that block at a given point in time. Once they commit, they'll free up their transaction slot or interested transaction list, and therefore it becomes available for someone else. In a trans was allocating how many of these you got when the block was created as the block, or in fact, when you allocated a new block for this particular table, how many slots do I want to resolve in advance? It used to be default to one. I'm pretty sure now it defaults to two. Even if you set it to one, you get two in the block no matter what. I can't remember when that came in, but you get a couple no matter what. Max trans defaulted to 255, which is the maximum number of transactions you can still have on a given block, but you could set it to lower. In my lifetime as a DBA, I cannot remember a single place that ever set it to anything than 255 for max trans. Um, I was trying to think of reasons why you might. All I could think of is if you, for example, back in the days of a parallel server environment, you might want to set max trans maybe to stop to make sure you didn't get too many operations going on a single block at the same time. I uh, just wanted to basically force them to wait rather than get into sort of a contention hell. Um, but that's a very rare niche case. I can't remember anyone doing that. What people used to do back in the parallel server days is percent, set percent free very, very high such that we'd have minimal people competing for the same block. Uh, but yeah, max trans, anything less than 255, I've almost never set. I think back in 11.2 now, we've pretty much deprecated it. We still support you putting the syntax on there, but no matter what you do, I think you can actually grow to 255 no matter what. So you can pretty much forget that one. In a trans, as we said, I think it's set to two now, even if you nominate it as one, uh, we just always want to have that second slot available. Uh, you can choose to set it to perhaps, you know, three or four or five. Uh, it's pretty rare. One thing you might choose to do it is to actually set it to you know, a number slightly higher than two if you're being very aggressive with your percent free settings to make sure you're not going to run out of transaction slots for concurrency because you've deliberately chosen to use up as much possible space for data in that block. But once again, 99.9% of applications out there can quite happily get away with the default for init trans and definitely the default for max trans. So guess what? you probably don't need them either. So next on the list were no compress and logging. These ones people are familiar with, so we'll fly through them. No compress is the default. The other option you have is compress, uh, which is a facility. Now you might be thinking, oh, this means I have to pay more licensing. No, we have different levels of compression. Um, I'm not going to dwell on these because there actually is a compression office hours, which I hope you've all been attending. Um, so yeah, so we have basic level compression and we have advanced level compression and in under advanced, there are various permutations. The basic one is free part of enterprise edition. Um, and the cool thing is that's works only for direct path loading. And that's the key thing I want to speak about here is if you're using compression, don't forget you only get the benefit of, compression for direct path loading when you're using the free compression. Uh, we have heaps of questions on Ask Tom, people saying, how come my table isn't being compressed? It's only compressed when you do direct path load or alt to table move. Logging, as you can imagine, is makes a lot of sense, is does all my changes go to redo? Once again, if you set something to no logging, 
Um, back in the old days, we used to call it unrecoverable, which was always somewhat of an alarming term. But yes, no logging. Once again, direct path operations only. Don't ever forget that the implications of no logging are on if you have a standby database, which hopefully everyone does. Uh, in 18C, we've improved things better, but certainly before that, uh, no logging operations can have a dramatic impact on your standby database. Uh, and as a result, no compress. Think good about think about compress, especially for data warehouse kind of stuff. Um, often not used and should be. No logging. Sorry, logging the default, and as you can imagine, you generally want it to stay like that. Mm -hmm.